All right, everybody, this is our last lesson for this unit, 1.4. We're still doing uh, exponent properties, but this time we're going to have exponents that have fractions. So I think this is kind of the difference. I think you've done 1.3 before, um, doing exponent properties. Um, but today we're going to be making our exponents be fractions, but you do the exact same thing, all right? Um, so if you want to read that, that's what this is talking about. Um, we do a quick review of how to add and subtract or multiply fractions. Okay. So, um, again, if we want to add or subtract, we have to have a common denominator. Okay. So we need to make this also be a 9. Okay. To do that, we can multiply top and bottom by 3. Remember, if we are multiplying something by 3 over 3, that's just 1. And you're not changing... The, uh, the expression at all. You're not changing the fraction, you're just making it less simplified. So that would end up giving us, again, when we, mul when we multiply, we multiply straight across. So 6 over 9, which is exactly the same as 2 thirds, and then we're going to add it to 5 ninths. Okay, we have common denominator, and then we just add the numerator, so that would be 11 ninths. Okay, why don't you pause and see if you can do this one, it's, it's the same. We're just going to subtract when we're done. Okay, we need to have a common denominator. Okay, so we can, one thing is if we can't multiply something by 4 to give us 5, we can multiply each other's denominator. So here we could do 4 over 4 and 5 over 5. This would give us 5 over 20 minus 12 over 20. And then it looks like we would end up getting, what, negative 720. Okay, and it's okay to have negative um, fractions. And then we want to multiply. We just multiply straight across. And then we can simplify our fraction as needed. So this would be 4 over 15. That can't be simplified. Or here we could get 6 over 21 which can be reduced. Looks like we could divide top and bottom by 3. So we get 2 over um, 7. Another way you can do that is you can simplify before you multiply the fractions. So 6 over 3 is the same as 2 over 1. And then we'd get 2 sevenths. So either way, you'll get there. All right, so let's do a couple examples using fractional exponents. Okay, so remind me what what do we do when we multiply like bases, and we're when we're when we're yeah, what do we do with their exponents? Well, here we would add, we add their exponents. So if it helps you, we can just kind of have them as like a separate problem. We'd need to have a common denominator, so we could multiply top and bottom by two for that one, and five over here. That would give us 2 tenths plus 5 tenths equals 7 tenths, okay? All right, so now we have that addition, okay? We know coefficients we multiply like normal, so we get n to the 7 tenths, okay? If we want to, maybe I should have done this first, so that would be 1 fifth plus 1 half, and that's where I went to here to give me 12 and to the 7 tenths. All right. So again, the only thing here is maybe adding or subtracting or multiplying those fractions. All right, here's another example. This one is a power to a power. Okay. So again, if you want, you could put an exponent there. This would be 4 to the 1 half and r to the 0 times 1 half, which is 0. And we know that anything to the 0 is 1. So now we just end up getting 4 to the 1 half. Okay? Um, you could use your calculator, but 4 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 4, which gives us 2. Okay? All right. Let's do some others. You're welcome to pause for any of these. Okay, so here again we're multiplying like bases, which we're going to add their fractions. So that would give us x to the one third plus one third. So 
which gives us x to the 2 thirds. All right. D, again, if we're missing an exponent, we can always put a 1. So, and we're multiplying like basis, so we'll add. So n to the 1 plus 4 thirds. Okay. So, um, we need to have a common denominator. One way we can do that is we can make that whole number to be a fraction by dividing it by 1. <clears throat> we need a common denominator, so we multiply top and bottom by 3. So 1 is the same thing as 3 over 3 equals 7 over, and then we add those together to give us 7 over 3. So we got n to the 7 thirds. Okay, power to a power, which means we multiply those fractions. So we do x to the negative 2 thirds times negative 1 half. Okay, so let's write this, I'm going to write this again. Okay, we multiply straight across. So negative 2 times negative 1 will give us a positive 2. And on the bottom, 3 times 2 is 6. If we can, we should simplify, okay? So 2 sixths is the same as 1 third. We can divide top and bottom by 2. So our answer should be x to the 1 third. Here's another example. You can pause if you'd like, give it a try. So we have this 3. These bases are being multiplied. So we'll do k to the negative 1 half plus 2. Again, we'll need to have a common denominator. So we have negative 1 half plus 2 over 1. We can multiply it top and bottom by 2 over 1. So negative 1 half plus 4 halves. And that gives us 3 halves. So 3k to the 3 halves. So hopefully you were pretty good with that last lesson. If you have not done that our previous lesson, you should do that before you try and do this. All right. <clears throat> Coefficients, just as normal. Those would cancel out, right? Um, and then we, if we're dividing like bases, we subtract. So x to the 3 halves minus 1. Again, we can make that be a fraction. 1 is the same thing as 2 over 2. So it looks like we'd end up getting x is equal to 1 half. Oops. x is equal to, or x to the 1 half. Sorry, I feel like I'm getting a little tired for today. Okay. <clears throat> Here's another example. We have our, like, 1 fourth here. That can't be simplified. Um, but we are dividing like bases, so we can subtract our exponents. So b to the 1 half minus 3 halves, okay? And what would that give us? I'm just going to write that again over here. We already have a like base, so it looks like that would give us negative 2 halves or negative 1. So we'd get 1b to the negative 1 over 4. But then we need to bring that down, and we're good to go, and change the sign of that exponent. All right, so I think that's about it with uh, exponents with fractions, okay? Just remember it's the same as what we did before. It's just adding and subtracting or multiplying is a little different. All right, and then we also need to talk about switching kind of forms, okay? Rational or fractional exponents. So we oftentimes will have um, rational exponents, Okay, but that means that we can also write it using um, what's called the radical form. So this is like ex exponential form, and this here is radical form, okay? And we want to be able to switch between those two, okay? So, 
how we do that, if we have a root without an exponent, um, which is called a the index, okay, here this would be like an index of 2. A square root always has an index of 2. So if we want to switch between this, all you need to do is we take everything but the denominator, we put that inside of the root, and the denominator goes to the root. It's the index for the root, okay? So again, if we want to do this, we would take the this, um, the base and its numerator for the exponent that goes inside. You could put the one there, but typically we would want to simplify that. And again, the root goes as the index, okay? If you're being asked to go the opposite direction, again, we take everything out, okay? We would, would probably have m, but then we need to realize that this is the denominator of the exponent. So, again, if we don't see that, we could put a 1 there, and the denominator becomes the 5. Okay, so being able to go back and forth is important. So here's another example. We take everything but the denominator, we put it inside, and then the denominator goes to the root. If we're going the opposite direction, we take everything out, and then the index becomes the denominator. Okay? Here, this one's a little tricky. Oftentimes, students will take these and put them inside, but remember, this exponent is only touching this x. So the 2 needs to stay out in the front. So we take the base and it's uh, the numerator of the exponent that goes inside, and then the uh, de denominator goes to the index for the root. All right. So let's do a couple of these together. Pause as much as needed. Just remember that a root without an index is a square root, or we put an index of two. All right, so here we want to change this to a radical form. So we will take our root, we'll put everything inside except for the denominator, and then the index becomes that uh, denominator. Okay, again the 3 is going to stay out in the front because it doesn't have an uh, exponent on it. Um, the a to the first will go inside and then the de denominator goes to the index, the root. Okay, here everything is going to the exponent. So here we put everything inside except for the denominator. Still need to have that x or that parenthesis, and then the denominator goes as the index. Okay, this is a square root, so here we're going like the opposite direction. We need to take that out, and this becomes the denominator of that exponent. Okay, if you don't, if you need to, you can write that one there, so you could put that there when you take it out. Okay, everything comes out, so 6x parenthesis to the fourth, and the, x, the index becomes the denominator. And here, pause, give this one a try, see if you got it. Then we take everything out, so 2x to the fifth. All right, this one's a little tricky because this applies to everything, where the 5 only applies to the x. So here you'd really probably need to have a parenthesis and do one to the fourth. All right, so those are all the examples. Um, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to come before or after school and I'll help you out. All right, we'll see you guys.